Warning, this episode contains adult language, mature situations, an Instagram chef main character, a duagonist foodie, mediocre art, a great storyline, and manga news. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Listener and viewer discretion is advised. Spark and Manga Review, episode 514. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Spark and Monger View. I'm your host, Zan, saying konnichiwa, aloha, bonjour, no and what's up? Hope you're doing well out there and hope you're excited for another fun-filled episode of this awesome podcast, which you can find at www.spyarkin.com. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, and various other social media sites. Uh, just look us up. Just type in SPRAK and I guarantee you'll find us one way or another. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And with that in mind, let's actually get to the manga review of the week. Because if you remember from that last episode, I spun that one, that only the Wheel of Manga. And it dictated on to be there reviewing a very unique manga that actually was a digital manga. Written by Sakiomi Yazaki and published by Katakawa Shoten, meaning it was released over here by Yen Press. It is, the original run was 2021 to still coming out to this day. It was released in Comic IT online magazine it is a digital comic that originally was on twitter then moved over to another venue there are currently three volumes and a live action tv series which is surprisingly very well received it is a jose series that is a cooking romance yuri series so yes this is a gl story and the original title is Sukuritai Ona to Tabetai Ona or as it is known in the united states and around the world as She loves to cook and she loves to eat. And this is a very unique story about two women, their love of food and their budding relationship and, you know, feelings for each other. And it is a story about two neighbors. One of them, Nomoto-san, she cooks for fun. She works a day-to-day job, and how she distresses is she cooks various foods, and she releases them on Instagram. Unfortunately, doesn't make anything very lavish, which is actually what she wants to make. She wants to make huge portions of food, because when she was a child, she used to want to make food for all her animal friends and have them eat with her, and none of them showed up. So now she wants to do that for someone and make lots of food, and that's what she loves doing. And... As she is one day getting ready to pick up some food, she notices that her neighbor, who lives two doors down, because they have two apartments that are two doors in between each other. There's an empty apartment in between them and the two of them. She sees her neighbor, who's a little intimidating, kind of tall, walking there with a huge bag of Kentucky Fried Chicken, going to get food. And she gets in the elevator. She smells the greasy food. She's like, she must have a party or something going on like that. And she looks at the girl. The girl looks at her. And she doesn't even ask the question when the other woman says, yeah, this is all for me. And this is Kasaga-san. Now, Kasaga-san is someone who has a very voracious appetite. Uh, she eats over, I think it's 3,000 calories a day for reasons which they don't really get into because that's not really the point of the story. And so she eats alone. She eats lots of food. And for that reason, Nomoto-san is intrigued because he's like, oh, my God, she eats lots of food. I can make lots of food. Even though that might be weird if I go next door and say, hey, do you want food? So she gets kind of confused, conflicted, and she decides to kind of drop it. Then when she's at work eating her favorite food, which is grilled rice balls, her coworker, who is this kind of... They don't really get into it. You don't see his face. You don't know why. But the coworker, who's a male, comments on, hey, that's really cool that you make your own food. You should make your own food for a guy. Kind of coming across very aggressive and it might not be that aggressive but for some reason it's portrayed as being aggressive and rude and she gets kind of skeeved out by this guy being so like hey you should do this and this and she's just kind of backing away slowly and she decides to vent and de-stress by cooking food she ends up cooking this very lavish meal and one thing i'll say is that the the scenes where they have these instances of bad things happening or suspecting happening you know bad encounters it has a very sleazy look to it and just feels very unusual for this story but i digress anyway so she ends up having a sleazy moment she ends up de-stressing cooks an absurd amount of food goes to kazuga and says kazuga i made a lot of food do you want to come over and eat and she's like sure i'll come and eat and she ends up trying this food which is a huge amount of food that she's made. It was karage chicken for the first time that she made odan and on tons of other food. And she loves it. And she indulges it and she tries it and she ends up eating it and has a look of, according to 
Nomoto-san, it is a look of pure joy, even though to us audience members it kind of looks horrifying. It's one of the issues of this manga is the art style is not great. We'll get into that in a moment. But she looks kind of horrifying, but she eats the food, enjoys it, and so they begin this relationship of Nomoto-san cooking these amazing foods and then Kasuga-san coming over to eat. It gets to the point where Kasuga gives money, her grocery bill, to Nomoto-san to cook food. And they end up having a friendship. At one point, Nomoto-san is sick, and Kasuga-san comes over to make sure she's okay. And it's this really endearing relationship that's well done. It starts building into this great story. And the story about them getting together is amazing. And I do enjoy the fact that it is a heartwarming story that is a more realistic will-they-won't-they than some of the, the shoujo stories that we've read before. Now... On to the characters besides Nomoto and Kasuga. Most of the other characters either don't have a face or they're not mentioned enough or they're just kind of not in the equation. The main story is Nomoto-san and Kasuga-san. And this is where they get into it. And it's fine, but it feels like there should be some more characters involved. And the other element which I brought up is that it is very... I don't want to say feminist because it feels rude of me saying it, but... It is very, it seems to make a lot of the male characters villainize for no for reasons. Like, oh, he commented that she should drink beer with her gyoza. That's insulting and rude. And they don't ever show the guy's faces, which is an artistic choice, but it feels a little odd. Uh, I would rather have seen someone with a sinister face or something. Not just like a, we are not going to focus on that. But I understand and I get it. And I talk myself in a hole. Anyway, go on. Next thing. Uh, the eating scenes, I compared, I was looking through some of my other food manga, and when you see someone enjoying a meal, generally their mouths are closed, or they have a look of pure joy, and you could actually find yourself salivating to it. In this one, that's not the case. The scenes where Kasuga is eating look kind of nightmarish. I don't know if it's because you see her teeth showing, or if it's... Just the way the design is, but there's something off and off-putting about it. I thought I was crazy and said, maybe I'm not reading this right. I showed this to Greta, and she was like, there's something weird about this. Can't put a finger on it, but it is off-putting. The other thing is that there are some scenes that are really well-drawn. However, there's a majority of the items that are supposed to be very scenic and beautiful. For example, the gyoza, the udon, the food. Or backgrounds that are described to be luscious and amazing look like they're Xeroxed three times and then they're presented. The art is... It's there, but it's... Something is wrong. The thing is, the story is top-notch. And reading on further, in the second volume, we get into Nomoto realizing that she's lesbian. And it's a great sequence which celebrates that moment. It's not thrust upon her. It's not this very convoluted moment it's a great moment however the so the story is amazing the characters are amazing but the art style is rough and it is very slow i ended up after reading this checked out the first two episodes of the uh j drama and i was riveted so the story is there just something in the translation doesn't work with this and that's kind of a failing on maybe it's my part but it just feels like something is off with this situation. And I don't know what to say. I just, I'm kind of conflicted about it. And I was going back and forth on what to give this. And I was like, oh, is it good? Is it bad? Is it great? And I decided to go on a, based on other food manga. So I went back and looked through Oishimbo, Sweetness, Enlightening, Restaurant to Another World. And I compared each one with the food scenes. And after going through each one... I have to say, after going through all that, I have to give She Loves to Cook and She Loves to Eat, I hate to say it, a gift from your crazy Aunt Muriel. It's okay, but forgettable. I mean, the story is great. The The J-drama is amazing, but we're not doing the J-drama. We're talking about the manga. The manga fails in a simple thing. There's just something that's off about it, and it's such a tragedy because this is a great story. I highly recommend this. If you like food manga, or if you like a good Yuri story, this is one of those ones that you really will enjoy. It's just something is off about it, and it just it left 
it left me wanting more. And it feels like this author could do better and should do better. As, as it gets to the second volume, the design for some of the food and some of the backgrounds gets better. But you still have this weird choice of her doing this thing with the mouth, which it's a little off. It's not little. It's off-putting. It's unsettling. It's kind of like, because you see the, everyone else, usually when they eat, they go, it's that feeling. For this one, it's, it looks like an attack on Titan, Titan eating a person. And that doesn't work in this situation, I don't think. I think this person should hone their their style a little bit, but I may be wrong. If you've read this and you disagree, let me know. Email me, zanspirekin.com, or tweet me at Spirekin. Let me know your thoughts on if you think that this was horrifying, or if this was good, or if I'm being too harsh on this. Let me know. Email me. And with that in mind, let's actually get to the manga releases of the week. And we've had some very great ones. And some ones which are kind of questionable at best. So let's get to it. Starting off with, am I actually the strongest? Volume 2, the light novel. Then after that, we have Ayakashi Triangle, Volume 3. Boy's Abyss, Volume 1. Card Captors, Clear Cards, Volume 13. Creature Girls, A Hands-On Field Journal in Another World, Volume 7. Demons of the Shadow Realm, Volume 1. Dance in the Vampire Bund, Art of Scarlet Order, Volume 8. I am surprised that this series is still coming out. I thought we buried this series years ago, but I digress. Disney and Pixar's Turning Red for Town for Real, the manga. A manga about a fictional band from Turning Red. Kind of cool. Eden Zero, Volume 22. Fire Force, Volume 32. I was reincarnated as a seventh prince so I could take my time perfecting my magic ability, Volume 5. Jujutsu Kaisen, Thorny Road at Dawn, the manga. My Girlfriend's Child, Volume 1. Other Side Picnic, Volume 4. Reborn as a Space Mercenary, I Woke Up Piloting the Strongest Ship, the Light Novel, Volume 6. Yes, this series is still fucking coming out. Uh, Reincarnated as a Sword, Volume 10. Shangri-La Frontier, Volume 5. Succubus and Hitman Volume 4. Suppose a kid from the last Dungeon Boonies moved to a starter town. Volume 8, the manga. The Dangers in My Heart, Volume 6. Yes, the series we talked about last week has a sixth volume out. The Girl from the Other Side, Sawil Arun, Deluxe Edition 3, which is Volume 7 to 9 of the manga in a hardcover omnibus. And then last and certainly not least, we have The Heroic Legend of Arslan, Volume 17. And those are all great, all amazing, and a lot of fun. And out of all of them, I had to go through and I said my top five of the week. And from this week, my top five are going to be, well, let's be honest. Let's start off with the most fun, the most great, Boys Abyss Volume 1. New series, looks really intriguing. Then we have Creature Girls, a hands-on field journal in another world, Volume 7. I love the art in this, and it's very different. Then we have My Girlfriend's Child, which is the story of a teenage boyfriend and girlfriend. They discover the girlfriend is pregnant. How that is, questions are asked. Could be unique. We have Succubus and Hitman, Volume 4. And then last and certainly not least, we have Suppose a Kid from the Last Dungeon Boonie Town, uh, Volume 8. So those are my top five. What are your top five? Let me know. Email me zanspirekin.com or tweet me at Spirekin. Let me know your thoughts. And with that in mind, before I go any further, I'd like to thank all of you who are watching and listening. I appreciate each and every one of you. Every email I get, every comment I get, it just gives me more inspiration and motivation to keep doing this podcast and do it as long as I can. Until I'm an old man reading manga with thick, thick glasses and a magnifying glass in large print. So thank all of you. You're all awesome, and I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you enjoy what you hear, support our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Spirekin to help us create more fun content for you to enjoy. We have four tiers with tons of rewards. Let us know what your thoughts are, and remember to like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy. Also, some final bit of news. Officially, I will be going to Animazement 2023 as press. I'll definitely be talking about that when we get to it. Uh, I'm finally moving in. As you can see, we got more up. The manga shelf is finished. Yes, I finally organized it where I've got manga on the top, light novels on the bottom, and larger uh, releases on the bottom. It's kind of driving me crazy again, this setup, but I digress. So anyway, 
So with that in mind, let's get to the part that you've all been waiting for and arguably the most popular part of this podcast. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about that one, that only, the Wheel of Manga! Yes, friends, a Wheel of Manga, except no substitute. Now, what is the Wheel of Manga? The Wheel of Manga is a Wheel of Fortune with 10 slots on it. And what I've done is I've assigned a title to each of the 10 slots and written them in chalk. Now, note, I am still out of chalk. I have not bought the new chalk. I ordered the new pens online. They have not arrived yet, so... This has not been updated with certain titles, so if it lands on one I've already reviewed, I have a list for new things on there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin it, whatever number it lands on. The manga that's in that spot is the one I'm reviewing in the next episode of the Spyker and Manga Review, episode 515. Yes, 515 episodes since this podcast started, and this actually works really well because in a few weeks it will be our 15th anniversary. Can you believe it? 15 years since I started this podcast. It's kind of crazy. I actually might wait to release this one till the 15th. We'll wait and see. Anyway, if that happens, I will let you know in the comments. But anyway, so let's get to it, shall we? Let's spin through and review the next episode, shall we? Number 10, Shonen Note. The story of a young boy who actually has a high-pitched voice. This one I'm kind of excited to read and talk about, so... We'll see you for episode 515 coming out soon. Let me know your thoughts. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. As usual, I am your Hosan. I am Gonsville. I'll catch you guys next time. And keep reading manga. See you later.